Now we're going to start talking about um, applying the general balance uh, equation to uh, specific reactor types, starting with one of the simplest batch reactors. Uh, but before we dive into that, let's just spend a little bit more time talking about the net generation term, um, the real centerpiece of this course, uh, and why, you know, sort of towards the end of the last video, I just kind of gave it that integral form. I just want to spend a little bit more time um, talking about it. Um, so we know that based on the um, overall balance, so overall balance, um, we know that that makes the, the GI term have to have um, the same units as all of the other terms. So the units are moles per time. Okay, and from before, um, from earlier, we know that um, the Ri, R sub i, um, the rate of formation of species i is, um, so let me just rewrite that, rate of formation of species i, that um, is a, a mole per time per volume term, right? It's referring to how much, how many moles are appearing or disappearing um, over a given time and also within a certain volume context. So if we want to think about um, our, uh, oops, um, if we want to think about our uh, reactor as, um, you know, in this case, I've given it a three-dimensional kind of box-like geometry here. And if we want to think about it as um, uh, a volume, uh, you know, it consists of uh, infinitesimal smaller volumes. Uh, in which we might have a different rate of formation of species I, and therefore a different um, generation uh, term locally, um, right? But this, this generation term, at least in our overall balance, is a net generation. It's just over the um, entire reactor. So if we were to assume, for example, if we assume spatial uniformity, which we will see, um, uh, spatial uniformity, if we would assume spatial uniformity, um, then no need to integrate over V, right? And so this is um, uh, not uh, this necessarily the same as just something um, being uh, well mixed, that's part of it. Um, uh, but but it really, it depends on how you uh, draw your system boundary. And we'll get more in, into this, um, particularly when we talk about tubular reactors. I just want to, you know, kind of give you a preview that if you had a, a pipe where reaction was happening, um, and and the reaction involved a concentration gradient say, um, uh, you know, across the um, length of the pipe, then you might um, be well mixed in, in this direction, um, but you don't have spatial uniformity, um, uh, you know, you don't have spatial uniformity across um, the length of the pipe. Um, and, and so that might still be confusing now. We'll, we'll get to that later. But um, if you just imagine that there's no need to, to integrate um, over V, then um, you have um, the, just this uh, GI um, equaling RI times V. And if you think about the units um, in this case, you know your Ri is moles uh, per time over volume, you know your V is volume, so uh, the volumes cancel out giving you back exactly moles over time. Um, so that all checks out, and again, uh, we're gonna spend um, a lot of time actually just in uh, the video right after this, um, talking about what these different reactor situations look like um, now that we're moving from you know what was a, uh, a general shape to now just using this kind of box idea as an example, just to explain why we're doing integration. Um, and, uh, and now we're gonna get into specific cases. So let's dive into our first specific case.
which is that of a batch reactor. Okay, so what's a batch reactor? Um, you know, if you were doing organic chemistry recently, um, maybe an OCHEM lab, and you have a, a reaction taking place in a beaker, um, you know, uh, nothing's coming in or out. Um, that's sort of the, the, the defining um, characteristic. So defining characteristic is that um, nothing goes in or out constantly. I mean, obviously you need to start it with something going in. So maybe a better way to say this is that nothing, um, no flow in or out. Um, okay, so um, another, you know, in your everyday life, maybe not in, in a chem lab, um, but if you're thinking about um, uh, situations where maybe um, you're cooking, um, uh, if there are reactions happening, um, say in your instant pot or other cooking device, um, that's batch. Um, another uh, example that I like to think of um, is brewing. Um, not that any of you drink, but um, if you were to say have um, you know your yeast and you're trying to brew a batch of, of some kind of homebrew, then you know we've already used the word batch just to describe that, but you're probably not setting up a bunch of pipes uh, or tubes to have, have things constantly flowing in and out. Okay, so that's what a batch reactor is. If I were to just spend a little bit more time um, with the shape, you know, you wanna be drawing your system um, for all of your homework and uh, exam problems, you always want to include a diagram. Uh, and you know, this symbol here is an, a stir or impeller. Um, it's just making it more clear that this is a well mixed configuration. Um, on the edges here, I'm, I've included a um, you know a heating or cooling jacket. And this is um, really more meant to just help you uh, realize. Um, uh, as we'll spend more time on later on, that um, there, there are temperature considerations, energy considerations to keep track of um, when dealing with all of these reactors. Uh, so, so it's good to, to just kind of remember that, that this might be there. Um, okay, so if we um, go ahead and, and start um, with the general balance, so start with general balance. Um, let's see where we are with all of our terms. So um, we can go with our um, general input uh, minus output. Um, now uh, I'm gonna just write that GI term. Uh, I, I'll substitute in terms in a second um, for the GI, but for now that's, that's our net generation. And then we have our accumulation term. So how many moles of species I are changing over time? So this is our general balance. And right away, because we have no flow in or out, um, we can go ahead and um, cancel out these two terms. So we have nothing coming in, nothing going out, great. So we're left with um, what uh, appears to be a relatively simple equation. And you know we're starting with batch reactors for a reason. Um, we wanted to start with uh, the situation that would involve the fewest terms so that we can, you know, quickly go ahead and, and do the relevant math. Um, so let's go ahead and next think about uh, how would we work with this equation? We've got um, GI and we've got um, DNI, DT. And so part of what I want to accomplish in this lecture, um, you know, is, is um, not necessarily uh, at first to just show you how we get a different design equation for all the different kinds of reactors, but also how we might use this. Um, so with batch, we're gonna, we're gonna take this a few steps further because it's not yet a useful design equation. And then we're gonna use it in a simple uh, problem and then we'll go on to the other reactor types. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll, um, I'll substitute for GI. And I'm gonna do that not with the triple integral single, uh, symbol, but um, rather with just a, a single integral over the volume. And so I'm going to use the fact that this is an integral over 
uh, the R um, of Ri dot dvr. And again, um, you know, I think our textbook uses just um, V rather than VR, but with my handwriting, it's, it's harder to tell apart my V from my volumetric flow rate. So I've tried to write it out here. Um, okay, so in the right side of the equation, the right hand side stays the same. Um, except that's not necessarily very useful to us because um, we don't have common terms here. We have some uh, rate of formation of species I, we've got a volume. Um, and, and one of the assumptions that we're gonna make very quickly or already about a batch reactor is that it is a wall mix. And so this rate isn't gonna vary as a function of volume. Um, and, and so that's gonna be helpful in a second, but uh, we still don't have any kind of, um, uh, of concentration or mole species. Um, on the left hand side, which we have on the right. And so we know that's where um, what we learned from chapters one and two about what RI means um, uh, might, might be helpful for, for making that substitution. So um, for now, uh, the only other thing I'll mention here is that um, NI, um, you know, it's helpful to remember, um, remember that NI is, um, it, it, it can be um, related to your concentration um, because it's the product of concentration and volume. Okay, so, um, you know, the, you can get, end up with a, you know, if you think of concentration as moles per volume multiplied by volume, that's how you get your moles. And a lot of times you're gonna know the concentration um, or you might know the number of moles. But in either case, um, we're seeing that maybe um, we could have a VR show up on the right-hand side. Um, and so let's, let's go with that and, and see what happens here. Um, so if we, if we just rewrite what we had, since we're on a new page, I'll do that. DVR um, equals DNI DT. And let's go ahead and substitute in for ni, ci times vr. Okay, now remember, um, we're gonna we're gonna assume that uh, batch reactor. That's my uh, shorthand for reactor, is well mixed. And you should always state this assumption, even if it's going to be part of the assumption every time for a batch reactor. You should always state it. Um, so all um, the DVRs that I was, all those infinitesimal volumes um, have the same CIs, right? Okay, um, and we don't have to worry about um, diffusion. Um, so you know, no diffusion concerns from one box to another. This is all kind of the, just the implications of well mixed. All of these basically say, you know, therefore um, Ri is not a function of V sub R. It doesn't matter what part of our batch reactor volume we're in. If we imagine ourselves in any of those tiny boxes, we're gonna see the same rate of formation of species I. So what that means is then when you look at this uh, equation, specifically this left-hand side and the far right-hand side, you can simplify as follows. Um, you can go ahead and take VR, uh, you know, integrate over it, take it out of the integral, um, and then you've got um, this term here on the right-hand side. And, you know, I'm trying to spend a lot of time going relatively slowly through what could seem like a simple derivation for a lot of you, but um, you know, I, I want in kinetics there, you know, you, there are these tables of these design equations and so forth. But you really want to be comfortable uh, just doing all of this from first principles, and that's what we're doing here. I mean, we're starting with um, you know a general balance that only has four terms, uh, and so you should be you should feel comfortable. Um, you know, in every homework problem, you don't have to re-derive what the batch design equation might look like, but you should feel pretty comfortable doing that. Um, so just in case you're keeping tabs um, in your book, in the Roberts textbook, this is equation 3.5. Um, so that might help you follow along. And again, this is, um, 
for, so I'll just go ahead and box this. This is for a batch reactor uh, at constant or variable or variable volume. So note that um, all we had to do here was assume that Ri doesn't depend on uh, Vr in order to, to integrate a Vr and get this full term here. On the right side, on the right hand side, we haven't yet taken Vr out of this time derivative, um, which is interesting because ordinarily you don't think of, you know, your um, you, you, you might not think of the container that you're using um, as something that's, that's changing in volume. You know, if we go back to that organic chemistry situation or, or your, your um, brewing situation. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in reality, um, your, your volume um, actually might be changing, not the container itself, but the substances within it. So imagine um, that you have a liquid uh, or some other kind of fluid that doesn't have constant density. So as your reaction is happening, it's expanding. Um, and so it might not always be safe to, um, to, to take your, your volume out of here. But in, in most situations, um, if, you're, if your uh, uh, reactor is at constant volume, go ahead, so at constant volume, uh, you end up with um, just dCi dt equals ri. Um, and, and so that's um, going to be the case um, for um, incompressible fluids. And this is going to be an equation that you might use a lot. Uh, um, so, you know, I'm just going to mention that uh, you, you might see a lot of variations on, on this equation here uh, for batch. Um, the Roberts textbook talks a lot about some of those. Um, for example, um, in, it has a, a, a situation where if you have, for example, a um, uh, example, well, let me say example of variations. Um, if you have a heterogeneous catalyst, heterogeneous catalyst, um, where you have catalyst weight, then you're going to see something that looks more like this. Um, and you know, if again, if you're following in the textbook, that's um, equation three point three dash five a. Um, and there is going to there are going to be many more substitutions that involve uh, conversion. Um, but I want to save those for our next lecture because um, those are going to be more common. This situation, um, it, we're not going to not going to spend as much time on that. So. Um, not as common in this course. Um, but it, it, it is derived in a very similar way. It's just a di different definition of, um, you know, your uh, thinking about things on a, on a weight of catalyst basis rather than a volume basis. It's just that you're normalizing to something different.